Hey guys, how's it going? It's Take a Bite here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up Simu to stream to the Steam Link so you can finally play Wii U games on any screen in your house. Keep in mind, it is far from perfect at the moment, but when it works, it is entirely worth it. So without further ado, let's get right into this. To do this, you'll most likely already have what you're going to need. First off, you'll need Simu, preferably the latest version, along with whatever games you're going to be emulating. Along with this, you're going to need a remote desktop client that you can access from your phone or any other device, or an extra mouse and keyboard. I personally use Chrome Remote Desktop, but any should do. You're also going to need to have a Steam Link, Steam, preferably both with an Ethernet connection, and your controller of choice, as long as it connects properly with the Steam Link. As always, I'll have links to get all of this in the description below. So the only setting you're going to have to change in Simu is to go under Debug and select Render Upside Down. If you don't do this when streaming to the Steam Link, it's always going to show up upside down and will be pretty much unplayable. However, once you go back to your desktop, make sure that you have this unchecked or else you're going to be playing it upside down on your host computer. Now in order to launch these games through Steam, you're going to have to add a shortcut. So to start off, make sure you right click Simu create shortcut, and it doesn't really matter where you put this as long as you know where you put it. And then after that, you're going to want to go to Steam, you're going to want to go to here, add an on Steam game, browse, and you want to find that shortcut. In my case, it's just in the Simu root folder, double click it, add selected program, and then either find it or you can search for it, Simu. And then after that, you want to right click it, go to properties, and then start off by changing it to what name of the game you're going to emulate. So Mario Kart 8. Then after that, you want to go here under target. You want to type space dash G space. Then you want to leave it how it is. And you want to find the game you're emulating. So I have it in this folder here and it's Mario Kart 8 and a Lodine version. So there's an RPX file. In your case, it might be a WUD or a WUX. But no matter what file it is, you want to go to copy path. And then after that, go back to Steam. And you want to, after the dash G space, put that. And then just make sure when you look, there's a space between there and a space between there. And once you paste that in, go to the end. You want to type space dash F. And then after that, you should be good. You can close that out, go back to Steam. And it's not going to be Simu anymore. You're going to have to search for the game. Go here, double click it, and wait for Simu to launch. And look, it's loading. So after that, what you're going to want to do is leave your host computer and go to where you have your Steam Link set up. Once you're there, go up to settings and you want to go to controller settings. And then once you're there, make sure that you have Xbox configuration support ticked if you're using an Xbox One controller or PS4 if you're using a PS4 controller. Then once you have that set up, go down to base configurations and go to desktop configuration. And once you're there, you want to make sure it's set up like this. So Y is Y, X is X, B is B, and you don't want to have it set up so it's mapped like a keyboard and mouse. And if you have it set up like that, what you're going to want to do is go to browse configs, you want to go to templates and then make sure you select gamepad or else you might have an issue when you're using Simu and it will think your controller is a keyboard and mouse. Once you have that set up, what you got to do is back out, go to library and go to Mario Kart 8 or whatever ROM you're trying to do this for. Once you're there, go down to manage shortcut then you want to go down to controller options and make sure that this isn't checked. Allow desktop configuration and launcher. And once you have that set up, go to OK, controller configuration, and just make sure it's still like this. Y is Y, X is X, B is B, A is A. All of the buttons are mapped like they should be. And once you're done with that, you should be good to go. Just launch the game, and everything should work as planned. Now once the game loads up, everything should be working as it normally would on your PC. However, you're going to notice your controller isn't going to work. See, I'm pressing A now, moving the sticks, nothing's happening. So in order to fix that, we're going to have to go back to the host computer and we're going to have to map this controller as a different controller from what you normally use. So once you get back to your host computer, you're going to want to press escape and then most likely you're not going to be able to click anything on this bar. So to fix that, press windows, then click directly on options, then go into input settings. Now you're going to want to wait for that to load, but the problem is most likely your Steam Link is far away from your host computer, so it's going to be pretty much impossible 
to press the prompt on your host PC and then go back to your Steam link and press the button on the controller there. So this is the part when the remote desktop comes into play. What you can do is go on your phone or if you have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse this would work too, but you want to just press A and then map the correct controller. See, as you can see here, it shows up as an Xbox 360 controller as opposed to the Xbox One controllers I usually use with my PC. So because of that, you're going to have to remap it, but once you do, everything should work normally. So as you can see, I'm now back at my Steam link and I have a remote desktop pulled up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in and then I want to move the cursor to B. Then I'm just going to tap and go on my controller and press B. And while it's not the easiest thing to do and it's kind of bothersome, it doesn't take that long and once you do it the first time it's pretty easy and you most likely won't have to do it each time you try to play. As you can see, the controller is now working and you can play Mario Kart 8 as you normally would on your host PC. And this method should work with more than one controller as long as you go through the input process and make sure everything's mapped up correctly. So right now, let's just load into a quick race. Go clog top cruise. And it should load up normally like it usually would. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. As always, everything you need is down in the description below, and if you have any questions or problems, please leave a comment below. Also, as a thank you for 2,000 subscribers, I'm doing a small giveaway for you guys, and you can find the details about that in the description as well. Stay tuned for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!